The plum pudding model does not help with explaining why this 1 over n squared relationship exists for the light emitted by atoms. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford suggested an atom is made mostly of empty space. This conclusion was based on the gold foil experiment where he sent alpha particles at a very thin gold foil and observed that principally they went through. Therefore, instead of the atom being composed of a large blob of positive charge, being the plum pudding model, it must instead be a small, positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons. So the result of the Rutherford experiment was, was quite significant because we moved away from this idea where we had this nebulous amount of charge, which was positively charged, and inside of it we had electrons embedded inside of it this being the plum pudding model of the atom. And instead we moved to this model of the atom where we had a small concentrated nucleus and that we had electrons moving around in orbits around the nucleus. And hence our model of the atom became that it was mostly empty space where we had a small tiny core and we had electrons rotating around it. Now of course this view of the atom still was not consistent with what would, had been measured using spectroscopy of, for instance, the hydrogen atom. And so the first reason why it wasn't consistent was that these electrons, they couldn't remain stationary. There was no reason for them to remain stationary. And part of this was because we have a positive charge and we have a negative charge. And so there's going to be mutual forces of attraction that then bring them together. And because the electron's mass is much smaller than the mass of the nucleus, then the electron essentially moves straight into the nucleus. So that means that the electron has to be orbiting around the nucleus so that it can stay not falling into it. So it's moving in a circular path that travels around the nucleus. The problem with this though is that as something is traveling in a circle, that means then that there is acceleration happening because there has to be a net unbalanced force which points to the center of the atom. And this is typically called the centripetal force. Because of that, as the electron is moving around, it has to be radiating energy. So it would be sending off photons as it moved around. And as it traveled around the nucleus, as it gives up more and more energy, these photons would change frequency and the orbit actually would not be a stable one but because the electron is losing energy its speed is slowing down and that would mean that the electron then would slowly spiral in to the nucleus and in the end it would collide with the nucleus and we wouldn't have an atom anymore. So there was two reasons why this wasn't fitting with with reality and the major overarching one is this fact that if the electron were to give off any energy as it spun around in a circle, then that means it would, its orbit would decay and it would eventually crash into the nucleus. But the other thing was that what was measured was very specific spectral lines. But as this decay or as this orbit decayed, the electron would give off all different frequencies. So there would not be any specific spectral lines that would be consistent with specific atoms. And so for these reasons, the Rutherford model of the atom was incomplete in terms of describing what, the actual, what was actually measured in reality.